I'll have two questions, one for each, if you don't mind. I'll start with, with Haley. First off, congratulations on uh, getting your wings, as you put it. <laughs> Where you. will you find the time? Those, those are both, this is a big title and your other job is a big job. Where do you find the time to do all of this? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a fair question. Uh, well, when, when Kyle uh, approached me with the, uh, the opportunity, uh, you know, initially I thought, oh boy, you know, that's, that's a big job, both are big jobs. And uh, we just talked about uh, how to make it happen. Um, and uh, he gave me the opportunity to be able to hire someone that I could work with. And right away, I, I thought about Danielle and uh, her experience uh, being a head coach bottle washer bus driver for 14 years at the University of Calgary um, just her ability to run a program coach develop do all the things that we really do in development um, and then someone that I have played played with played for uh, and worked with for so many years uh, that I knew kind of looking at at my role and having her uh, alongside me would be possible so uh, discussions with the University of Toronto uh, residency program as well my program director uh, the opportunity in the, in the program that I'm doing does have uh, a fair bit of flexibility and uh, uh, what I've done so far in the last three years in medical school, uh, I think has been much harder than what I'm about to do right now because I'm able to be in one place. So uh, I weighed everything pretty thoughtfully and uh, having Danielle here is just a, a huge bonus to our program as well as the way that we restructured everything. And thank you. And, and, and Danielle, um, um, your hiring, I, I would suppose, would be is less newsworthy that a woman is taking our, over this role than it would have been maybe when Haley took over the role a few years ago or before that. What's it say about uh, progress in the way pro sports teams look at the value women can add in locker rooms and with players that it's not really um, that big a deal for a woman to do this job? Yeah, like I, I would agree. I don't think it's a, as big a deal now. Like Haley has been there in the past. Uh, you know, she, she showed that she can do the work, but the fact that I'm going to be w working with Haley right now and be kind of the right hand of Haley right now. And uh, for me, at, at the end of the day, it's like, what can we bring to the team? How can we make this program better to bring it to the next level? And if you know Haley and myself, we're pretty like high intense, you know, we have high expectation and we're going to do anything we can in our, in our power to, to do a, a good job and, uh, you know, even if I have to do job outside my, my uh, curriculum or what I'm supposed to do, I'm, I'm, ready, I'm ready to do that as long as it's going to benefit the, the development program. And, uh, you know, I, I love working with young players, like developing young players. I, I'm pretty uh, detail oriented with skills and skating. And, you know, if we can add just a little bit to each players to make them like better and me, help them to achieve their goal to play in the NHL one day or helping any other NHL players to get a little bit per, better. Even if it's one person, it's going to be much better than they were the day before. Next up, we'll go to Lance Hornby, Toronto Sun. Go ahead, Lance. Hi, this is for uh, Haley. Uh, Haley, you're coming up on three years uh, with the Maple Leafs uh, in, the, in the player development department. Could you talk a little bit about uh, of your, your impact there? Uh, is there a player or is there a, some, an example that you're particularly proud of where you think you've made a difference, either with a player or uh, with a trend the Maple Leafs have right now? Uh, that's a good question. You know, I, I've, I've come in and out over the, the three years. And so um, I, I think maybe in, just in terms of, of the environment and, and the culture of, uh, of just, just being there. I mean, I, I don't really know if there's, there's one player or example that I could think of, but I think, you know, it comes in, in maybe the small conversations you have or the little bit of time that you get to spend with players um, uh, you know, I wouldn't take credit for any one player or the team doing what it's doing right now, for sure. I mean, I think it's been a, a collective, uh, you know, a lot of credit goes to the development staff that were before me, Scott Pellerin and Stefan Robidaw and those guys that uh, kind of really laid the foundation and then the, 
the good work that's being done right now. I think we have a really complete development staff. And then, you know, I'm a big believer that at the end of the day, the, the player does the work and, and they do get all the credit. You're just sort of there to facilitate and help them along the way. So I don't know if there's anything, I any single thing I've done other than I think when I do come to the rink every day, I try to bring a pretty positive, optimistic attitude. And I'm all about just how do we get these players better and, and perhaps uh, not, I don't uh, sugarcoat things. So if something needs to be said to a player, I'm not afraid to maybe say it, which I think benefits the player down the road. So that's about all I really, really could say to that, that question. Okay, thank you. And a follow-up for uh, Danielle, if you don't mind. Uh, when Haley first came, Danielle, uh, uh, she said it was uh, the, the players, the young players that she worked with uh, were more interested in improving themselves. So they looked great past the fact that uh, it was uh, a female in, in a traditional male role. How, do you, how much do you look forward, Danielle, to, uh, to taking over and, uh, and, and experiencing that for yourself? You know, I, I'm looking forward uh, to that experience. And at the same time, you, you can't forget that, you know, develop, uh, player development is not only like two people. It, it's a big group of people around us. Like we have skill coach, we have skating coaches, uh, video coaches. Like uh, our job is to make sure that we work well together to make sure that we, we help the players as much as we can. Um, you know, if you think you as a person, you're going to make the biggest difference. I think we're going to be, we would be wrong. Like, I think we have to use the strength of everybody we have in hand to make sure that the players benefit of that. But listen, I'm, I'm looking forward. They have great staff over there. I, I was lucky to, to be able to work with some of them in the past. And, you know, I, I, I'm looking forward to learn more and add a little bit of my experience with them and, but at the end of the day, it's a teamwork that's going to make benefit the, the players. Next up, we'll go to Donna Spencer with the Canadian Press. Go ahead, Donna. Hi, Haley. Hi, Danielle. Um, Haley, I got the sense that um, you had a say in um, the hiring of Danielle. And so maybe both of you, if you could just sort of tackle how this conversation went and if you were surprised, Danielle, to get this call. <laughs> Uh, well, I can take that first, maybe, Danielle, <laughs> then you can. So, uh, yeah, Kyle, uh, Kyle gave uh, the option to me of who I wanted to, to hire and, and let it be my decision in the end. Uh, right away, uh, the first person I thought of was Danielle. And uh, so I actually uh, was standing outside the Foothills uh, Hospital in Calgary, uh, and I called her on a break. I said, I need to talk to you urgently. Where are you? She said she was in Montreal. So <laughs> we connected quickly. And I said, uh, you know, how would you like to move to Toronto and work with the Leafs, your favorite team? And uh, she laughed. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's kind of how it started. And uh, we just continued over the last few days talking about, about it. So I'll let that know. She finished. Yeah, you know, it's funny. She she was talking, she was at the hospital at a break and it was between surgery. It was kind of funny. Like, I don't have a lot of time to talk to you, but I, I didn't see that coming at all. Like she was talking about her new roles with the uh, role with the, the Maple Leafs. And after that, she's talking about like what she has to do. And I'm like, yeah, that seems good. And at one point she, she said, hey, I'm thinking about you. Like, would you be interested? I was like, what? You know, I was shocked. I never see that coming. But at the same time, you know what? For me, um, as a person, I always say, like, you know, it's good to take uh, a risk in life, you know, take challenge. That's when good things happen in your life. And uh, because it was from Wick, like, I know how she is, like, how competitive she is, like, how uh, detail-oriented she is as well. And sh she knows, like, she has a high expectation. And for me, you know, working, like I played with her, I, I coached her and she knows who I am as a person. Like, you know, I, I'm straight to the point. Uh, that's hard for me when she said that. It, it took me a long time, like a long time. I had a week to make a decision, but, you know, I had to think about the good and the bad because I had a, like, I was working in the University of Calgary. I, I love what I do. Uh, I, I was able to run a program. But while talking to Wick, like I, I think my job, I'm going to say easier. I'm not going to have to do like sharpening skate and book hotel in the room and things like that. I'm going to be able to focus on one job and do that job as the best as I can. And I, I don't think I, you know, I, I would say that, you know, working with Wick and with the other staff, like, yeah, I'm looking forward because 
when you talk, when you work with the NHL teams, um, you know, especially the, Ma the Maple Leaf, like I would say you want the best, you want to get to the best possible, like what can you bring to the team? Like even like for us right now, it's to make this program better and uh, we're going to do anything in our power to get there. So what uh, I would say, what I know about both of you is you're both very determined, which is perhaps another way of saying stubborn. So how are you, how is your professional relationship? Um, I guess, how do you see your professional relationship working? You've had a relationship for a long time, but this is a different uh, circumstance for it. Yeah, well, um, we were joking because uh, I, I played for Danielle. Danielle, so we were line mates for, oh boy, 15 years or more. Um, you know, played like incredibly well together, uh, kind of a one-two tandem. Then I played for Danielle for several years at the University of Calgary. She was my head coach. And then I said to her, now I'm your boss. So <laughs> this is very, this, it flip-flops, but I don't look at it like that. I, I look at it as we're teammates. And even when she was my coach, uh, you know, the, the respect was there. You're the coach, I'm the player. And that's what we're doing in, in this particular capacity. We're working side by side and as we are with our whole staff, there's not really a hierarchy necessarily. I mean, at the end of the day, decisions have to be made and there has to be sort of one voice. And I guess that will be me, but um, we have such a cohesive group and the way that we work together, um, there's a lot of back and forth and bantering, but at the end of the day, we have a lot of respect for each other. Uh, it's, it's honestly never been an issue in, I don't know, the 30 years that uh, we've known each other. I would say the same, you know, I echo Ailey, like, you know, playing together for so long, we went through like up and downs and like a lot during our careers. And like, I think we see the, the good side and the bad side, the bad side of each other. I don't think we're going to be surprised by any reaction The wish is going to react to something or, you know, or say something. I think I, I, I kind of know what to expect from Wick and I don't see anything that's going to change about the relations we have right now. Uh, I think we're going to keep pushing each other. I think that's what we did all our our time that we played together. And I think that's gonna keep going in that situation as well. Thanks. Next up, we'll go to Joshua Cloak, The Athletic. Go ahead, Josh. Hey, Haley, Danielle, would love to hear from both of you on this. Um, the Leafs player development department has always been player centric, player focused and focusing just on the, the needs of the player first and foremost. I'm just curious from both of you, what are some of the changes that you would like to implement that you think would, would better serve players? Well, uh, in, in the, the new uh, structure there, Joshua, we, um, we've sort of took a, taken a three-pronged approach. So Daryl Belfry will be heading up sort of the technical uh, co staff and player development side of things. Um, so in one hand, we're developing players. On the other hand, we're also developing ourselves as staff and the people that are working with the players to constantly get better. Uh, Will Sibley uh, is going to t take the arm of the analytics and, and sort of video operations side of the department. Um, so we we're developing a much more robust uh, system of tracking uh, video work for each player with uh, quite in-depth detailed uh, development plans, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, myself, Danielle, will sort of oversee the, the whole department in terms of uh, our prospects we have in the org organization, just really uh, having clear communication uh, and making sure that we're constantly touching our prospects, whether they're playing in uh, the KHL and junior uh, with the Marlies, the Growlers or the Leafs. So it's, uh, it's a pretty robust program, I think, from where player development sort of started in the NHL 10 years ago to where it's going um, you know, I'm pretty proud to be a part of a group like this that's uh, hopefully going to just continue to evolve the well-set plans and blueprints that were put into place by um, Scott Peller and, Ro and Stefan Robidaw when they started here and then had built on that in the years to come. There's a lot of good stuff here. So um, I think those are some of the areas that we're really trying to expand. Next up, we'll go to Moses Waldu with Global. Go ahead, Moses. Thanks there. And congratulations to both you ladies. I know this is an exciting opportunity for you, Danielle, just going in and working with Haley once again and the, the combination from line mates to player coach to now the relationship you have once again. Uh, Danielle, I wanted to focus this question towards you, just the, the surprise because it's, you, you seem so very happy at the UFC and content over there. Now you have an opportunity to uh, be in the NHL 
and, and work in, in that fabric in a front office type of role. Just take me through the, the emotions and the excitement perhaps over the last few days, knowing um, about the announcement or hearing from it from Haley and then to now, and perhaps maybe you can talk about, has it sunk in just yet? Well, it's, you know, to be honest, it's been a lot of emotion, I would say today, like I, I talked to my players this morning, uh, before we had a meeting with uh, the staff and uh, explained to them that I was moving on and took a new challenge working with the Maple Leaf. They, they were like, you could see some face, they were a bit disappointed at one point, but they were so happy for me as, as well. Like, uh, that was emotional like, to, to go through that with them because I, I love I love coaching. I love the games. I can watch hockey 24 hours a day. It's it's something that I'm passionate about. Um, and and joining, listen, joining the Maple Leaf. Like when you think about it, it's it's one of the best organ, sport organization in the world. Like not just in North America, but in the world. And um, to have that opportunity for me, it, it was like emotion back and forth. Like should I do it or not? But you know what? Opportunity like that in in life you know you have to take it when they pass because they never they might never come back I see that opportunity the same thing that when I moved to Calgary like 25 years ago I couldn't speak English moved there for five months and I've been here for 25 years like so many things happen good things happen because you take risks in life and for me this this is a, a risk but it's a calculated risk because I know what I'm who I'm going to work with and and for uh, but at the same time, I, I would say right now, today, talking with people and receiving all the messages and emails and it, it make like I've been I had a smile all day. Like I, I'm getting like sore a bit, but uh, it's just for me, like it's a dream come true. You know, like like when we talk about uh, playing hockey as a girl, so you, you want to play in NHL. You, at one point you say like it's not going to be happen like. We got it to the uh, Hockey Hall of Fame, me and Haley, like we didn't think that would be happening. And now we're getting to the NHL, like everything is changing. And I feel, I feel lucky that I'm able to, you know, to open some doors. Like it's just about, it's not just about us, but it's about female sport as well. Like having like women in sport, having uh, roles that make a difference in NHL for me, it's, it's pretty amazing to, to be in that position. We'll take a couple more here. Just a reminder to please use the raise hand function if you have a question. We'll go to Simon with La Presse. Go ahead, Simon. Hi, my, I have two questions, both for Haley, because I spoke with Danielle earlier today. Um, Haley, it's not that usual that uh, a former player gets to hire her former coach. <laughs> what are the, the Danielle's qualities as a coach that you were searching for the, 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 for the job to, to, to fill? Mm -hmm. Um, oh, that's a good question, Simon. Um, you know, uh, with Danielle, having played for her and with her, uh, what, I, what I knew that I needed in this role was someone who was incredibly organized uh, off the ice with the ability to manage a lot of uh, moving targets and factors. Someone who understands uh, the development of players, both uh, physically, psychologically, emotionally, which is what she's done. As a, as a university coach about the same demographic as the players that we work with here. Uh, and the ability to also go on the ice and step on the ice tomorrow and work with an Austin Matthews or a John Tavares and not be in an intimidating situation, which Danielle has also done in, in the off season when she's not working with the Dinos, she's running groups for NHL players. Um, and the expertise she brings in terms of uh, skill development um, and her skating knowledge and expertise, which we wanted to expand on as well uh, in, the in the department. Uh, and also, I think probably most importantly is this is somebody who I, I really trust. Um, I, I know has an in incredibly good work ethic. And I know that she has worked hockey and lives hockey, um, you know, every day of her, of the, her life since I've, I've known her. She's got a passion for the game. It's not been a really a part-time thing for her. So I couldn't think of anyone more qualified, male or female or whatever, any demographic uh, than Danielle for the role, quite honestly. And, and uh, I will say that uh, outside of, I think, in, ma in male pro sport, uh, unlike the, the men who potentially made a lot when they played, uh, you know, Danielle didn't make a lot of money when she played and uh, for her to walk away from uh, possibly a, a, a much bigger pension at the University of Calgary as a coach and give that up for the uncertainty of coming to the NHL where 
really we're all hired to be fired at some point. We all know that this is the nature of the business. Um, it, it takes a lot of courage and it just it showed, uh, you know, I, I figured she would, <laughs> I had to, didn't have to convince her too much, but I know that's a big, big step um, in her life to give up that, that security that a lot of, a lot of people would be afraid to do. So I just, all of those factors involved made me really, uh, feel that she was the best person for, for the role. You kind of touch on it, but now the, the, the Maple Leaf are in a situation where their their number one and two of player development are women. Uh, it's the the biggest mark, hockey market in North America is player development is run by two women. What message does it does it um, shows to maybe the rest of the league or hockey in general? Well, you know, when when I was hired and and uh, you know, I give a lot of credit to uh, my time that I worked with Daryl Belfry as a player in the development area. And Daryl and I worked together for so many years, and uh, I think he got an opportunity to see who I am as a player, my knowledge of the game, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And probably was one of the reasons why the Leafs even called me to begin with. Um, but now I, I don't know that I see it so much as, you know, searching for women as you're just trying to hire the best person for the job. And so when I got the opportunity to hire someone in this role, um, it wasn't for me like oh, I must hire a, a woman. It was like, who is the best person that I, that I know or that is out there that could fill this role? And, and quite frankly, it, it was Danielle. And uh, I think it's what it's, it's showing is, first of all, the Leafs are an incredibly progressive organization. I'm really proud to be seeing a lot of the things they've done in particular the last year um, not just in hockey but around hockey if you really look at what MLSC is doing I think it's quite world leading um, and and then secondly just the opportunity to be open-minded and, and look at different perspectives and hockey is a game that we're probably the, the last pro sport that's really making these changes and progressions but you're seeing in other pro sports basketball NBA that this is kind of becoming old news and it's just about going after the best qualified person for the job and and, uh, you know, that looks a little different than it did 10 years ago because people's mindsets have changed. So I, I think it's good. It's good for the world. And we have to change as, as the world changes. And it's about elevating. Next up, we'll go to Carol with RDS. Go ahead, Carol. Thank you. Uh, my question is for uh, Danielle. Bonjour, Danielle. Uh, félicitations pour votre nomination. Merci. Euh, ben en fait, vous en avez parlé en anglais, mais je voudrais vous entendre, si vous voulez bien, en français sur les émotions que vous avez ressenties lorsque vous avez décidé d'accepter le poste, puis qu'est-ce que ça représente pour vous et puis pour les femmes en général, cette nomination. Je, je veux dire, euh, émotionnellement, j'ai passé à travers beaucoup d'émotions, euh, surtout depuis le, le fait que euh, j'ai accepté le poste euh, avec les, les Maple Leafs. Euh, il, y a, il y a eu une grande décision à faire. J ai, j ai, je coachais avec l'Université de Calgary. Um, j'aimais ce que je faisais. J'aimais le monde avec qui je travaillais. Uh, C'était un job qui était solide. Uh, je faisais qu -ce que, presque qu ce que je voulais avec le programme. Mais le fait de, au hockey féminin, tu, tu, tu fais de tout. Hein. Tu, tu t es, t es guise les patins. Tu t as tu t t es responsable de, de booker des vols, des hôtels et tout ça ensemble. Puis quand Wick m'a appelé à, à propos de la job, mais je, ça m'a frappé. Je ne euh, m'attendais pas à ça du tout quand elle on s'est téléphoné. Euh, J'ai eu des hauts et des bas avec les, les décisions, mais au bout de cinq jours, je me suis dit que tu sais, dans la vie, tu n'as pas beaucoup d'opportunités. Puis quand ça arrive puis ça passe, il faut que tu, tu les prennes. Et puis, j'ai décidé de prendre le risque. J'ai un gros risque pour moi. J'avais une pension avec l'Université de Calgary et tout ça. Mais pour moi, de, de pouvoir faire partie des, des Maple Leafs de Toronto, c'était un, une grosse, une grosse... Ça a balancé beaucoup dans ma décision. Et pour moi, chaque challenge qu'on qu a dans la vie, ça apporte beaucoup de, de résultats. Puis pour moi, c'est ça qui m'a fait que j'ai décidé d'aller avec les Maple Leafs. Et merci. Puis, comment entrevoyez-vous la transition de devoir travailler avec des hommes et puis travailler avec des... Ça va faire changement? On... Bien, je veux dire, depuis... quand tu grandis dans le hockey, que tu sois dans le hockey féminin, dans le hockey masculin, tu as des femmes autour, tu as des hommes autour, euh, 
Nous autres, au hockey féminin, on, on, a, des, on a eu des coachs qui étaient, étaient masculins, des, des entraîneurs hors glace, sur glace. Pour moi, ça n'a pas vraiment d'importance. Et j'ai eu beaucoup de travail dans ma vie que c'était autant hommes et femmes. Euh, j'ai fait beaucoup d'emplois au, au niveau que c'était comme classé masculin. Euh, pour moi, ça n'a pas vraiment d'importance. Pour nous, euh, quand j'ai parlé à Wix, c'est pas c'est pas parce qu'on est deux femmes, c'est qu'est-ce qu'on peut apporter. Si je peux apporter de quoi pour faire, faire que ce programme-là soit meilleur, bien, tant mieux. Puis le fait que Wix soit là aussi, puis je sais que c'est c'est uh, high expectation, excuse mon, an, mon anglais, là, mais uh, je sais comment elle fonctionne en tant que personne. Elle, elle veut toujours atteindre le, le, le niveau, uh, un niveau plus supérieur, je pourrais dire. Puis on est comme, on est fait un peu de la même manière. On, on recherche toujours la perfection, même si, si c'est impossible, mais on va pousser à fond pour être, pour être capable de faire de, de ce programme un meilleur programme. Mais aussi, en même temps, il faut être sûr qu'il faut travailler avec tout le, le monde qu'on a autour de nous. Ce n'est pas avec like, deux femmes en, en, en haut puis on, 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 on manège le monde en bas. C'est qu'on veut être sûr qu'on ait une très bonne communication puis euh, qu'on travaille tout bien ensemble. Parce qu'il faut, à ce niveau-là, il faut que tu utilises le monde avec les plus grandes euh, technologies puis les, les forces qu'ils ont en tant que personne pour avoir un meilleur programme. We'll take three more here. We'll go to Tristan with CKVL Montreal. Go ahead, Tristan. Bonjour, euh, Daniel. Euh, ma question, euh, en fait, j'en ai deux pour vous euh, rapidement. Euh, ma première, c'est comment trouvez-vous ça, l'ouverture euh, pour la place de la femme dans le monde du sport et plus particulièrement euh, du côté de la Ligue nationale de hockey? On en voit un peu partout. Là. On a vu Kendall Coyne Schofield derrière le bar du club école des euh, Blackhawks de Chicago. Et maintenant, vous, vous êtes là à la tête euh, du développement hockey chez les euh, Maple Leafs avec euh, Madame euh, Dr. Haley Wickenheiser. Madame Dr. Haley Wickenheiser. That sounds so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, je veux dire, pour nous, c'est drôle. Dans le monde, ils font un, un gros cas à, à voyant deux femmes au, au niveau du, uh, uh, des joueurs de développement. Pour nous, c'est, comme Haley disait, c'est qui qui est capable de de faire un, un travail qu'elle qu avait besoin, puis je pense que j'avais les qualités de ça. Mais c'est sûr que quand on voit qu'il y a plus de postes qui s'ouvrent au niveau de la Ligue nationale, c'est le fun de voir. On sait que dans la Ligue nationale, on regarde le, le basketball, on regarde au football, il y a des assistants coachs qui sont des femmes maintenant. Je pense que ça va ouvrir plus de portes euh, au, au niveau des, de la Ligue nationale. Maintenant, que ça, ça, quand il y a une porte qui se trouve, après ça, ça va mieux. Puis comme Ellie disait, l'équipe le, 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 de management avec les, les Toronto Maple Leafs sont, sont ouverts. Ils ont un esprit ouvert. C'est ça qui fait que c'est le fun de travailler, d'aller travailler pour une organisation comme ça, quand ils croient en toi, puis qu'ils savent que peu importe que tu es une femme ou un homme, si tu as les bonnes qualités, ils savent que tu vas faire un bon travail. C'est le fun de voir ça. Et euh, que diriez-vous à des euh, jeunes filles là, qui écoutent le point de presse présentement et qui voudraient travailler dans le monde du hockey? C'est sûr, pour, pour moi, je pense que quand on, on pense au niveau du hockey, peu importe que ce soit au niveau masculin ou féminin, euh, je dirais au monde, si, aimes, si tu veux coacher, il faut que tu fasses du bénévole, il faut que tu t'arranges pour commencer euh, au niveau en... Euh, plus euh, au niveau P, oui, Bantam et, et tout ça. Puis avec l'expérience, et là, tu grandis. Puis il ne faut pas être, avoir peur avoir, de faire du bénévole. Je pense que c'est là que tu apprends beaucoup à aller avec des organisations, avec même les, les, les livres de Toronto, n'importe quelle organisation universitaire, euh, junior majeur. Je pense qu'à toutes les fois, tu as une chance de côtoyer ces, ces personnes-là, ces coachs-là, les, les directeurs, et des personnes comme ça. C'est là que tu apprends beaucoup. Puis il ne faut pas avoir peur de, de travailler et pas être rémunéré, surtout dans le domaine du sport. Si le monde il pense que tu vas faire beaucoup d'argent au niveau dans le domaine du sport, souvent, ils, ils vont se tromper. Euh, tu fais ça parce que tu es passionné à, à, au niveau du sport. Puis pour moi, c'est ça qui, qui fait que j'ai continué dans le niveau du, du hockey. C'est parce que c'est la passion qui m'a amené à. And last two here, we'll go to Joshua Cloak, the athletic. Go ahead, Josh. Thanks. Uh, Danielle, Haley mentioned something uh, before that's really interesting. She was talking about um, the psychological improvement that you've kind of had on your players. I'm just curious when it comes to psychological improvement of players, because we know that, you know, that there's more to player that develop 
development than just what we see on the ice. What does that look like to you? What is the importance of psychological development with players look like to you? Well, you know what? Like when you think about the players, for me, like when you look at the, the, the farm teams, like when you look at the players they have, they are junior major, they have so much skills. Like they, they have great players, but to play in the NHL, sometimes, you know, skills not going to be good enough to, to get you there or to keep you there. That's, I think that's what we, we need to, to work with right now and with the players is like, you have to be tough. This is a, a tough league to play. This is the best league in the world. Um, and players who get there, they work, they're going to work hard. And you have to think about any players in the world want to have your spot on the team. Like this, you have to be able to like mentally be strong and forget about what's going on around and focus on what you have to bring to the team. And sometimes it, even to change po- change position like you have players and juniors sometimes that might have played on power play all their life but they might have to start on the pk in nhl like how to have that mental uh, aspect of the the game that you you can uh work on that listen we're, we're not expert into that but we've been through up and down a lot in their life that trust me you learn the the hard way sometimes but I know like the Maple Leaf have like, they're going to have sports psychologists. They're going to have it so much, so many people around them, but sometimes it's at that moment at the right time on the ice during a practice or during a situation, a play they did, how to help them to overcome and the way they react to that situation, that's going to make them better. And last question here, we'll go to Kevin McGrand, Toronto star. Go ahead, Kevin. Hi again, just, Kind of want to end on a bit of a lighter side with Danielle, if you don't mind. I, I There's a big playoff series going to start Thursday. And I imagine maybe a week ago, your allegiance would have been different. Um, what what will it be like for you to push allegiances in the like this? Well, you know, I like, first of all, it's going to be a great series. Like every time you, you, you have games, Montreal, Toronto, like it's, it's always a great game. You never know what's going to happen, but the one thing I know, like, you know, I won't be able, I can't change my French accent, but I can, I can change the team I, I cheer for. That's, what can I say right now? Like, that's like, for me, like Montreal Canadian were like growing up were somebody that I, I learned the game, the way I, I to play the game, because that's the only French channel I could lessen, you know, but right now for me, you know what, like it's, it's, I'm going to work for the Maple Leaf and I, I want the Maple Leaf to do well. And I, I want to make sure that I can help the, the prospect that coming up to the Maple Leafs.